got sort of the overall view. Now, let's look at uh, what the various things represent. Along the bottom of this is, um, records all the visible energy that the universe provided, and the, that large number is here. And that energy was provided at the beginning of time. So this line is really the beginning of time. Okay, now on the uh, vertical axis, um, what you have is these types of civilizations. You see zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera. And if you can think also that those numbers are figures of merit or, 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 or identifying numbers for the, uh, the level of their IQ, it's all the same thing. Uh, it's that the civilization, civilization type is discrete. And it's discrete because they tie the energy that you're to control to those three different types of objects that I uh, told you about. And so those energies, like for Saturn, it's right down here. And for the sun, it's right there. So Saturn and the sun are very close. And so Saturn really is justified in being a type two, called a type two. <coughs> okay, so Earth down here, uh, is it a type one? Well, no, not quite. We only manage energy that's at the seven-tenths level. I would say we are about a seven-tenths type of situation on this in the, uh, to, to gradu put graduate marks on, the, on, on that scale. Um, Okay, so you go out to the Milky Way, and sure enough, the energy of that falls right there. So in checking the energy for these three points, uh, they fell in a straight line in a plot like this. And that made me feel very happy, because when you have three points in a straight line, it makes it easy to extrapolate. And <clears throat> so uh, you, I extrapolated primarily upward there. And uh, the dashed line is the extrapolation, and it ends up on the beginning of timeline um, at about six and a half. So uh, if you were to manage all the energy in the universe, you'd have to be a civilization of about six and a half uh, a caliber. Um, now a question arose as to uh, where God is in this picture. Um, and the question arises, uh, does he have infinite intelligence or is it something less than infinity? Okay, so th the curve is broken up here and at the top there is infinity. Um, I, I consider this top corner where the horizontal line that comes across and, and the beginning of time when intersect, that little intersection, I call that God's corner. Um, because it's infinite, uh, he knows everything, and uh, he created the universe, which is essentially what that means. Uh, time goes from right to left, and so over in here, the time would be about uh, something in the neighborhood of 15 billion years. And so you can see that it takes quite a bit of time to, for these things to happen. Uh, just the, the vertical separation between um, Earth and where we are now in terms of, of producing energy, uh, that repre represents quite a, quite a span of years. And so it also gives you some idea that uh, you know, we're not going to get very far very fast unless we really wanted to do it. So, now I want to try to give you a little flavor of physicist thinking. And um, I got intrigued with uh, Kaku's presentation. Um, now, it turns out that the starting point for Einstein's work was really the Pythagoras uh, theory. And 
probably most of you know what that is, namely, if you have a right triangle up here, um, you take the, the side here and make a square out of it, you call you, that area of that square based on that one side, plus the area based on the other side is equal to the hypotenuse, the long side of a triangle, and the total area. So these two areas here of the opposite side equals the area of the hypotenuse. Okay, so you can just say that eight squared then is equal to um, y squared and x squared plus. Okay, now the big point of that is only that it's two dimensions there. X and y are just two dimensions and uh, it's a planar kind of approach. Okay, so now how do you bring this up into 10 dimensions and, and we'll show you how it's, it's being done. Okay, here is a three-dimensional case and so you do the same thing, you get X, Y, and Z for the different, and you add those all together and you get the length of that long line extending from one corner to the furthest opposite corner and um, so that's, that's the relationship that, that is there. Now, if you want to go to four dimensions like uh, Einstein did, well, you simply throw in another term. And in this case, it was T squared. And so now he has four dimensions. He doesn't know whether physically or not it means anything, but he's got four dimensions. And, um, and so since he doesn't know what to call the resultant, he just calls it space-time because you don't know what that resultant is all about. Now, if you want to go to 10 dimensions, I tried to make up a, a quick way to do that, but what it means is you have 10 terms and each of them are squared terms and you can substitute all other kinds of equations in each of the 10 terms, but uh, you set it up so it's 10 dimensional and that's what the physicists believe that they're doing now. Um, I'd like to hark back to say that for um, the, the type two civilization, uh, Bob Dean uh, tweaked me uh, on, on that kind of uh, situation. And um, I, I agreed on his statement that um, there is an existence of a type two civilization, maybe it's a, even a type three, uh, according to what we saw there with the sun. So, uh, there is very great high intelligence kicking around the universe. Now, it's a question of whether the physicists can come up with a theory of everything. Uh, now, mind you, what has happened here is everything is based on the Pythagoras theorem. And, and the math guys like it because they get a plus and minus out of every square. So when you take the square root, it's either plus or minus, and so if you have energy, it can be either plus or minus, and so it makes a neat thing, but mind you, it's just geometry, nothing more, just geometry. Okay, uh, here are the things that uh, the physicists are trying to do to plug uh, their 10-dimensional theory. Uh, it's it's hard for me to read it. I don't know. Can you all see it? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, space time is the first one, and that's that's Einstein. So Einstein blocked himself out four right at the beginning. Now the rest of them are what the physicists want to include to make up the ten, and. Uh, you go down those and you come to quantum theory, that, that has given the physicists a lot of trouble because um, that essentially says that uh, their systems are gonna be digitized. Uh, the string theory, they believe they need something else to explain um, how things get started and they're hoping that um, some sort of string will show up in, in the cosmos. Well. Uh, we got an EMV that is capable of making strings, so they have no problem that way. And it's a question of whether they think it's appropriate to incorporate it. But uh, right now, there, there's no realization as to why uh, uh, 
the DMV type of thing should be recognized. And uh, the data are there, it's an open secret, but uh, uh, I guess the question of, well, I know it, but don't bother me with facts. Um, now, uh, the, uh, this thing is a little too high, but these are acknowledgments, and um, it's hard for me to read it. Okay. All right, you can go through those and you see it. And all right, there are, there are three women that are omitted from this, and I want to give them credit. One is my wife, who has spent a lot of uh, lonesome hours while I've been trying to put a lot of this stuff together. Uh, another is Judy Donnelly in Washington, D.C., who was my first president of the California, California uh, Civil Engineers Society. And um, she was, uh, this was an education foundation, and she became president of the Education Foundation. And the third is uh, Casey Dawkins, Marilyn Casey Dawkins who uh, has had a touch of her in, in most everything that I've presented. Okay, take home thoughts. I hope you can read that. And uh, we're running out of time. Okay, a closing thought by Stephen Hawking. Uh, he's claiming here that the only one would be if we can figure out something for everything, theory for everything, and then we'd know the mind to God. Um, I think that's a little overstatement, but that's in the right direction. And here's my idea of where we are. Um, we have a little rover here looking under Adirondack, and, but in the meantime, why we got this huge EMV in the background with a laser pointing down to the surface. And I think that's about contrast, the, the technology. Okay, lights, we're all through.